All right, I think we're going. What's up, guys? Welcome to uh, the call with Mark Briggs of 22 Hardcore P90X, P90X Plus, P90X2, P90X3. Any other ones I'm missing, Mark? I think that's it. You covered the bases there. <laughs> Uh, Mark, Mark is an awesome, amazing guy. Um, I, I tell this at like every Super Saturday I speak at, but I met Mark uh, probably like six years ago at uh, my first Super Saturday. I heard Mark speak, and um, I've told him this a million times, but he's, he's one of the people who made me believe I could coach for a living um, and just really inspired me on that Saturday and kind of propelled me into, into fitness and becoming a personal trainer and all that kind of thing. Um, obviously, he's much more than just a guy on videos. He's in the military, been in the military, uh, police officer. And uh, I don't know how much Mark will go into that today, but I think he's going to tell you a story and uh, hopefully motivate you guys for tomorrow when we kick 22 Hardcore off. So, Mark, welcome, man. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Lance, thanks for having me, brother. And, you know, I think I said this in the little pump-up call for this, uh, the little pump-up video. You guys are so lucky to have Lance as your coach because he is somebody that genuinely cares about people over dollars, and it, and it shines through and it shows in every aspect of who he is and what he does. And uh, before we get started, for those of you that might not have been here, I invited him to come back down to the house and train here because he's just <laughs> an absolute beast. Um, Lance and I are both big boys, so when we get the little guys jumping around all nimbly bimbly and we're all winded and... <laughs> <laughs> lift and have your weights so we can do that stuff as big boys so yeah I'm, um, trying, I'm trying to start slimming down here mark i'm getting a little yeah not me man <laughs> you're good <laughs> no 230 walking around that's my normal weight so um thanks again for having me on the call and thanks for all of you for taking time out of your evenings to jump on the call i think it's awesome that you're all taking on 22 not just because i'm in it but because it's truly a very effective program uh super efficient you're going to think uh, you know, 22 minutes, is that really going to give me a workout? And once you get started, you're going to think, 22 minutes, can I really get through 22 minutes? Um, it's fun times. You know, I got started back like so many other people. I saw Power 90 back in 2001 in an infomercial, and I was at an all-time low point in my life, recently divorced, which also meant I was broke. Never bought an infomercial product in my life, and here was Tony Horton standing on the beach in Hawaii with this button-down shirt that was taped to my chest. And I'm like, why am I watching this? But at the end of it, I ordered it. I did it. At that time, I was wanting to uh, get on the, the uh, SWAT team on my department, and I probably could not have passed the run. So I jumped in, uh, did Power 90 for 80 days. Dropped, uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm muting, uh, muting some people right now. Sorry about that. No problem. There we go. There we go. All right. Sorry about that. So anyways, did uh, Power 90 for 80 days, lost 40 pounds. I did nothing, no running or anything like that. And the run was my biggest struggle. I had to do a mile and a half in 10 and a half minutes. And um, I shaved two minutes and 25 seconds off my run time, made it on the SWAT. Uh, and then from there, I was just hooked. I kind of, I went on to Slim and Six after that, ended up uh, getting involved in the message boards through Beachbody because we didn't have the advent of social media as it is today. Um, and with the encouragement of this, the community through Beachbody message boards, I put in my transformation story. I ended up winning that, got selected to go out to LA and uh, do an infomercial with Debbie Siebers for Slim and Six. Um, and the last night there, we had this big cast party and guess who crashed the party but Tony Horton. And uh, we had those personalities. We just kind of clicked. He ended up giving me and a couple other people a ride back to our hotel. And he sat there in the hotel lobby with us until three o'clock in the morning yeah, he had us do this ab routine from his new program that he had just made and it absolutely crushed us. And they had just literally finished the first test group of this program, which was P90X. Uh, I ended up as one of the first hundred customers to do P90X. Uh, ended up in the infomercial for that first round of that. And then from there, I mean, I was just completely hooked. I started going around the country to Tony's uh, different fit camps that he did at the time. I was kind of like a little mini Tony stalker, I guess. I uh, went to Phoenix and Boston and just kind of all over the country. And um, I also, from the time I'd been doing Slim and Six, I was got very involved in coaching people because I was uh, one of those people I was super uncomfortable in my own skin. I'd go to the beach and I wouldn't take my shirt off. 
And I remember how that felt and it would just bug me and I didn't want anybody to feel that way. So in November, late November of 2006, I get a call from Carl. And he says, hey, we're looking at putting this network together. Uh, long story made good, it was for Beachbody. I knew nothing about network marketing, but I believed in the company, I believed in the products, and thought if I make enough money to offset the cost of my supplements, cool, I'm going for it. Um, signed up as a coach, knew nothing about it, and um, learned about it, got educated in it, and two and a half years later, I ended up resigning from the police department with 18 years of service. Uh, made a couple little workout programs with Tony along the way. We had P90X+. Plus. And then we did P90X2, and then we did P90X3. I had the honor of uh, co-creating some programs or some workouts in those. Plyocyte from P90X2, if any of you have done that one. MMX from P90X3, that was, my, uh, that was my little child. Tony called me up and said, hey, this is your background. You have free reign. Make something, make it fit in this time frame. And, um, you know, so I've been very fortunate in that sense. I got to co-create workouts in Tony's first book. Um, been all over the globe, literally bringing fitness to our troops here and abroad, uh, toured Japan, Europe, all through the United States, done some of my own tours, and that's kind of my way to give back. Uh, I was a soldier for three years. The first time I went into the Army Reserve, I had a 15-year separation of service, went back in for two years. So that's kind of near and dear to my heart and kind of who I am and what I'm all about. And, um, you know, I got the call for 22, and Ironically, I know I, for, for some of you that were on earlier, I walk around about 230 pounds. I'm, I'm not a little dude. Um, but Tony, when I'm in his programs, like we shot, uh, when I did P90X Plus, I was 170 pounds. When we did X2, I was 185. X3, I was 185. He called me and said, hey, if you want to be in 22, you need to get in shape. And I said, well, what do you mean in shape? How much do you want me to weigh? He said, it's not about weight. I need you to be able to to be super fit. Your cardio has got to be there. Your strength's got to be there. I said, dude, tell me what you want me to do. And he said, I'm talking Navy SEAL fit. I'm like, cool. I'd been doing body beast for a solid year at that point. I switched my training modality. I switched my diet. I went back to my MMA training. That is kind of my background. I've been a martial artist since I was 12. Um, and I cut down from 230 to 192, which was about over a four month period of time when we filmed one out. Uh, shot the workouts and it was an absolute blast because coming from the military background anytime and if any of you were in here are military or from, come from a military family when you get around other veterans it's this instant connection and it's just like magic like you may have never met this person in your life but they're they're your brother or they're your sister and you just instantly have this bond and you'll see that when you do this program I mean we're all just we were thrilled to be part of it. We went through the, uh, through the filming. We actually, for those of you that don't know this, for our, our CEO, Carl Deichler, bought a mountain in Malibu, like the top of this mountain. <laughs> and I didn't know this until we went out there to film because that was our location. And when I say a mountain, like we're in this van going up and it's like going around and around, like weaving through this mountain top. My ears popped twice from the elevation changes going up. And we get up there, and as it turns out, how many of you have seen MASH? Remember the show MASH? Yeah, yeah. I know I'm old. A lot of you may not have. Carl's Mountain is three ridges over from where they filmed MASH. So, oh. I mean, it's, like, it's up there. If you've been overseas, it looks like Afghanistan um, without, without all the bad people trying to kill you, which is always a plus. Um, so we shot this thing. You know, I was, I'm in uh, Cardio 1 and Resistance 1. You'll see my smiling face on day one. You can curse at me if you want to. It's the biggest honor to have when people send me messages and I'll just get the, like the single finger and a text message from my friends. And I'm like, <laughs> I know exactly what that means. And that means I did a good job. Um, but you know, it's, it's a great program. It's super efficient. If you really dial into it and you, and you follow the meal plan and you do your best on the workouts, you're going to be amazed what you can accomplish in 60 days. Um, it, it's truly a super efficient program. Now, the other thing, and it's important to understand this too going into it. Don't try to keep up with those of us in the video. There is, especially if you're using Beachbody On Demand All Access, there is a modifier track you can select in every single one of those workouts that has a designated person that is going, going through it. So I don't care what shape you're in going into this. You can absolutely get through this and don't hesitate modifying and don't feel like you're failing if you can't keep up with the other people that are in the thing. Okay. Um, when, when I was prepping to do this, they identified which workouts we were going to be, 
they sent us the moves for those workouts and for three months straight, that's all I did. Monday through Saturday was the workouts that I was going to be in. Um, you're going to see that there are either ascending numbers for reps or descending numbers over the three sets that you're doing for each of these exercises. Um, and we trained to the point where we were doing maxed reps for all three sets. So cardio one that you're going to see tomorrow, if you guys are all starting tomorrow. Yeah, we are. I did max reps for all three sets in just under 15 minutes. Wow. If you're going to get through and you're going to be like, holy smokes. So when you see us out there sweating, there's no spray ons <laughs> with the beach body workouts. You're seeing real sweat. You're seeing real people work in, I think it was cardio two. They actually had a guy go down as a heat casualty. I mean, it's, it's the real deal. So listen to your body, take your time and, and ease into this, but I guarantee you, you're going to get better and better and better as you go through it. Don't give up. Don't quit. As long as you have a beating heart in your chest and breath in your lungs. And sometimes you may not have breath in your lungs. So we're going to stick to the beating heart in your chest, which, which may sound like a drum. You can get through this. Okay. Does anybody have questions? Cause I like, I like to get on and kind of give my little spiel, but I also like to open it up. So if you have questions about stuff, please don't hesitate to ask. And it's always crickets. So I'm going to put Lance on the spot cause I'm sure he has a question or two and then you guys will get relaxed and be like, wow, he's not going to say bad things to us. It'd be mean. <laughs> you know, he looks big and scary and tattooed. <laughs> yeah. Let me, uh, let me unmute everybody, Mark. And I do have, so, so my first question is just from hearing you talk, you, um, so I've never, I've never even thought about doing this, which is why I'm kind of, this, that's pretty cool. You did max reps with yeah. no breaks and you just see how fast you can do all the reps in that, in the shortest amount of time. Yep. Yep. No video. So what my, what my wife did was she typed up every move for every single one of the workouts and whatever we had on the calendar, we would pull that out because oftentimes I would go faster than what they do in the, in the, uh, in the DVD or on, on demand. So, um, by the way, don't hesitate to go slower or do fewer reps than what we're doing too, because it's the only person you're ever in a competition with is the one that's in the mirror. And you know, some days you may get up and you may be stressed out from work, or maybe you had an argument with your spouse, or maybe your, your dog would start barking and you couldn't get a good night's sleep. So it's important for you to understand one day may be better than the next, or one day may be worse than the next. Um, don't be attached to the outcome because your best on any given day is always good enough. The other thing that I found personally going through the test group, uh, when we did this was there was days that I didn't want to do it. I'm in the program and I don't want to do it. <laughs> and then I sit there and I say, man, it's 22 minutes, 22 minutes, just get up and go. And then I would get going and I'd be like, okay, I don't feel like doing 22 minutes today. I'm going to knock this out in under 18 minutes. And I challenge myself and I'd go and that would be it. You know? So yeah, you know, kind of a long winded answer to your short question. No, that's perfect. And what I always tell uh, our team too is on days where I don't feel like working out, um, I, f I really just want to force myself to get down there and I have my own little kind of warm up that I do. And generally halfway through the warm up, uh, my mind starts cooperating and I start getting into the workout. It's just, it's all about momentum and just starting to move. You can start to feel better about getting that workout in. And even if it's not, even if it's not a hundred percent, you know, I always feel great once I get it done. Some of my best workouts have been on days that I didn't feel like working out. Yeah, that's true. Very Sorry, I mean, I get in. Like you said, you just get started with it and then you take off and you're going gangbusters. So yeah. And conversely, if you have those days that you don't want to do it, some days are just going to be days that you show up and you go through the motions, but you still showed up. So you're still going to be better for showing up. So you got to keep that in mind too. Yep. What's your, uh, Mark, what's your favorite workout in, uh, in 22? My favorite workout in 22. Hmm. I would have to say, uh, probably spec ops cardio. Um, so once you get, once you get down through, you know, you have cardio one, cardio two, cardio three, then you get into the spec ops stuff, which, it's um it's kind of a whole new takes it to a whole new level and i don't know how many of you are planning on doing hell week i did that the first time through and i never do it again <laughs> <laughs> and i'm being honest it was just like i did it because i wanted to i knew i could get through it but you know i'm almost 48 years old and working out twice a day was just not all that appealing but i decided i was going to do it so i did it you know 
when I was younger in my thirties, I used to do doubles all the time. And anymore, I've just, one's enough. And, and you're going to be surprised for those of you that are used to doing longer workouts. I know beach body's kind of shifted towards 30 minute workouts. Um, you know, back in the past, we do 45 minutes or an hour and you'd switch to 22 minutes and you're like, I just, I don't know if I'm getting enough and trust me, you're getting enough. You're not going to need to do bonus stuff. Yeah. Mark, when you were cutting, what, what did your, uh, I'm, this is going to be different for everybody, but what'd your nutrition look like? Well, I'm a, I'm also a licensed nutritionist. So part of that for me was dialing into macros. I don't do the portion control containers. I've never done those because I was already licensed before then. Um, but typically for me, when I'm cutting weight, I'll go lower in carbs, um, higher amount of protein, and I keep my fat pretty consistent. And when I say, when I say lower in, in carbs, I'm not doing fewer carbs typically than I'm doing for protein. They may be closer together. Whereas yeah. if I'm in a maintenance phase, I'm, I'm probably going to be considerably higher in carbs than I am in protein. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, you know how many, you, well, you may not know how, about how many calories you're in, you, you have on intake for maintenance. Um, now or then? Uh, either. Probably 3,200, 3,300 now. Okay. Uh, then probably 1,900. Okay. But it, you know, here's, here's the thing. If you want to figure out, you know, being, being a macro person, Every, um, every gram of protein is four calories. Every gram of carbohydrate is four calories and every gram of fat is nine. So you can do the conversion on it. Um, but when it comes to shifting body composition and that's where you said this is very different for everybody else. It depends on your body type, your metabolism, your activity level during the day. You know, obviously for me, I work out once a day. I have a couple people that come and train during the day, but I'm not working out. And most of the time I'm doing what I'm doing right now, which is sit in front of a computer. So I'm pretty sedentary when it comes to that. Whereas if somebody's a construction worker, they're going to need a lot more than what I'm doing. So it's, it's different for everybody. Um, I know I mentioned the portion control containers for somebody that's got um, a significant amount to weight to lose, or you've never really dialed in on them. They are a great tool to get you started and moving in the right direction. Uh, you know, biggest, biggest part of the issue for many people is, we just eat too much. You know, if you look back to 1950, the dinner plate had an eight inch diameter and now it's 16 inches. So, and we heat it and we load it. So, you know, an average portion for protein is going to be about the size of your palm of your hand and a little bit smaller than that for carbohydrates. I know yeah, what, handling, but I don't yeah, want to. What, um, what, what I generally teach them is. It, 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Um, around That's 20, funny. 20 to 30 percent of your fat. It can be fat, and then fill in the rest with carbs. And for most people, if they're cutting, that usually comes close to about 40 percent protein, 40 percent carbs, 20 percent fat. And I think that's pretty much where the uh, container system is pretty close to that, right? I think. I think the I think the portion's a little bit higher in carbs than it is in protein, but like like you said, that uh, like a forty forty twenty is not a bad place to start at all. Yeah. Um, for me, I would probably do a fifty thirty twenty. With yeah, 50 and even that. Yeah. Um, but you know, you, you don't want to fall into this trap where a lot of people, you know, the the biggest fads now are this keto dieting where you're cutting out carbohydrates, you're going super high in protein and, and relatively high in fat. Uh, and you can do irreparable damage to your body doing that. I mean, I, if, if somebody's doing a, a photo shoot or a bodybuilding competition, doing that for two weeks prior, I can understand that. But for people that are doing this long term, like, yeah, I'm losing all this weight. Yeah, you're messing up your metabolism. And guess what? When you go back to eating carbs, you're going to put every bit of that back on and then some. Yeah. Um, you know, it's common sense, moderation for everything. Any diet plan that significantly cuts out any of the macronutrients, either protein, carbohydrates, or fats, is like putting a Band-Aid on a bullet hole, and it's not going to be sustainable before that opens up. Yeah. I'm a big proponent of, of adherence, and if you can't do it forever, then why, why do it? Exactly. Exactly. That's why I'm telling you guys, you've got a great coach. Lance knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Listen yeah, to Lance. Yes. I, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, what's your favorite part of working with Tony? I personally really enjoy the dad humor that comes through every single routine. 
but what's your favorite part of working with him? It's, uh, he's, he's easy to work with. Um, he's very genuine. What you see, like the joking and stuff, you, it's, it's a much more R rated version in person than what you see in the, in the workouts that come through his finished products. I mean, we've done just goofy stuff on set that's caused them to call cut numerous times because we're just idiots back and forth. And we just, we have that kind of energy that we feed off one another and it's a, we bust each other's chops pretty much constantly. And, um, you know, they, he's just, he's very real and, um, he really cares about what he's doing and he really, uh, so I guess, I guess to say one thing, I mean, it's, it's constant humor and it's always one upsmanship in some sort or another, you know, like, um, plyo side, for example, we were doing shows at QVC and in the downtime, we went over to the gym, um, attached to the hotel where we're staying and it was a leg day and it was, Tony and I trying to kick each other's butt and kind of one up each other. So the first half of it, he did the strength move and I did the cardio move for the plyometric move. And then we switched at the halfway point and uh, we got done and we're both grabbing our knees and he goes, we need to go back to the hotel and write that down. So we kind of went through in our minds what we did and wrote it down. He sent it off to Carl 15 minutes later, Carl comes back and calls it plyo side. So, you know, it's just, he's not one of these guys that's, um, He's, he's not so big that he can't take advice like MMX, you know, that they wanted to do a martial arts program for P90X3 and martial arts wasn't his background. It was mine. So he asked me to, to help him with it. I went out early and I ended up teaching him the moves and he's a perfectionist. So he had to have it. So until it was perfect. So there's many things, there's many things, but what you, what you see in the humor back and forth, I, I mean, none of that's scripted. It's just, you don't know what's going to come out of his mouth or what's going to come out of mine when we're going back and forth. Yeah, and I, I can vouch for how how genuine and real he is. I've met him a couple times, Mark. I don't know if I told you this story, but when uh, when Wayne won Coach of the Year, and we had to do that silly Elvis dance routine or whatever on stage at MGM, yeah, um, <clears throat> we went for rehearsal and we went backstage, and uh, there were like ten of us, and we walked behind the stage, and Tony was there, and I was just like, "Holy shit, there's Tony!" and um, I didn't really want to bother him or anything. And, you know, I, was, he could have so easily just sat on his phone or you know, done whatever he wanted to do. And he, he actually came up to us and asked us if we were coaches, asked us how the coaching business was going, um, was just super interested in how we were doing and if we were doing a good job and if, if we were enjoying coaching. I thought it was the coolest thing for him to do that rather than just, you know, he could have easily just, ignored us or sat on his phone, but he didn't. He was very genuine. So oh, yeah. I, I think a lot of people, the tendency is to be starstruck by people, and ultimately we all put our pants on the same way. None of us are better than the other. And with Tony, he's never forgotten where he's come from. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he has very humble beginnings, and I had the pleasure of knowing both his mom and dad before they passed. And, you know, it's just evident from his upbringing who he was and what he was about, and he's never lost that. So I can't say enough good things about him. Yeah. Don, did you have a question? Uh, I did. Um, right now I'm kind of at 1500 calories and, um, I was looking over the, the calorie intake for this program and the questions that I answered, I'm at 18, they're putting me in the 1800 calorie. Should I move up to that or should I stay where I'm at? Let me ask you this. You're seeing results where you're at. <laughs> No, because I haven't been consistent. There's the answer right there. So you have to be persistent and consistent, first of all. With not only, and, and I tell you, you're working out 22 minutes a day, which leaves 23 and a half hours left of the day that we're either eating or sleeping, and that's the struggle that everybody has. Um, if you want to see results, you have to be persistent and consistent. And I'm not saying starve yourself. I'm not, you know, it's a process, and you have to understand that, and you have to embrace that. Um, after you do it for a couple of weeks and you, you know, if you've written down your goals and really what it is that you want to accomplish, it kind of gives you that incentive to stay the course and stick to it. So, um, I would, you know, I base it personally, uh, unless I'm, you know, if I have to cut weight for something, which I hate doing, um, I, I don't typically track my intake. I just, I eat when I'm hungry. Um, and my weight stays, stays where it is. But if, if I'm serious about something, and I have a goal and I need to hit it, I dial in 100% and I'm locked in like a vice. And, 
you know, I still have a relaxed meal once a week, but you have to get that consistency first. A lot of what I base on personally is um, my energy levels throughout the day during my workouts. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm able to perform. I want to make sure that I have, you know, if it's the middle of the afternoon and I need to take a nap, there's something going on there. My body's sending me signals. So um, understand too, the first, you know, once you, once you really lock in on what you're doing, the first five days when you get strict and really lock it down, it's, it's not all that easy to do. It's, it's going to be the biggest part of the struggle, but after that, you're going to feel a whole lot better. Okay. It's, uh, it's getting past that first, first five days, Don. And we talked about that at, we had a retreat, Mark, and I, I talked about how our brains are driven by two things, either, uh, by pleasure or by pain. And I gave the example of when we're, you know, in, in college or whatever, we've all had some type of alcohol that we used to love until we got sick off of it. And it instantly made us <laughs> not want to have anything to do with it. And I think a lot of people can relate that to fitness. They stop working out. And when that first time, that first week they get back into fitness, it's painful and it sucks. And yeah. your brain immediately associates working out with that pain. And yep. if you can just get past that first week, two weeks, you start feeling better, you start thinking better, you start sleeping better, and then you start associating it with pleasure, and, right. and it's easier to do long term. Absolutely right. I can't, I can't add anything to that. I mean, that's exactly right. There's, there's, no, there's nothing more I can add to that. Yeah. So, so Don, we just, like, like Mark said, we just, you just got to be consistent. And I think if you... You know, we, want, we don't want you starving yourself, so eat as, as much as you can while losing that, for you, probably, you know, two to five pounds a week. Um, two pounds a week is 104 pounds in a year, and most people don't have that to lose, so I don't think, you know, you need much bigger of a goal than that. You know, we always talk about that, so. The, the I, other, one, one more thing, just to piggyback on that. If you have a bad day, understand it's a bad day. Tomorrow is a whole new, brand new day. Um, you're not a failure if you have a bad day. We all have bad days. Um, just get back on the horse and get back on task and head in the direction that you're wanting to go and you'll get there. Uh, far too many people beat themselves up because they have a bad day and they, they didn't do what they were supposed to. And, you know, you know the, the, biggest, the biggest thing I can think of is um, yesterday's in the past. It's history. Tomorrow's a mystery. That's why we call now a present, right? <laughs> so focus on today and do the best that you can on each given day. Like I said, your best on any given day is always enough. And if you need help, that's the, that's the beauty of the group too. So if you struggle with food, the biggest thing you can do to help yourself is post your food accountability in the group and tell pe give people permission to hold you accountable. Um, I know personally when I have somebody gives, the very first thing I do when I'm coaching somebody either personally or in a group is I want their permission to hold them accountable. And then I do that. Um, I don't sugarcoat things. I don't uh, pamper. I don't, I don't have pity parties. It's, it's blunt. And that, and that's how it is. We all need people that are going to speak truth in our lives. And you have to understand it going into it, that we are all in this together, no matter where we are, there's always a higher level to our fitness that we have to strive for is that we can always do something better. But when you're in a group dynamic and you guys are, all lifting each other up and leaning on each other you know some days you may be lifting somebody else up and the next day they may be lifting you up and that's the beauty of the group is coming together and learning to trust each other and, and work with each other and really care about each other because you're, you're really going to be like a little platoon here with 45 people you're you are a platoon you get your platoon sergeant lance who knows his stuff i'm telling you listen to what he's telling you and you may have times in your head that you're going to say well that doesn't make sense to me or i'm not seeing the results fast enough and i'm going to be blunt here can i be blunt with everybody Absolutely. You didn't, oh, yeah. get out of, you didn't get out of shape or fat overnight, and you're not going to get skinny and in shape overnight. Absolutely not going to happen. Stay the course, put in the work, and you're going to see the results, I guarantee you. All right. Cool? Cool. You got this, Don? I got it. I know she's got it. I'll start, I'll start taking pictures of my dinners. <laughs> Perfect. Of my plate. Of Here's the other thing. By sharing that, you're going to motivate mm -hmm. other people because they're going to say, hey, I know that she struggles with this and she's putting herself out there and she's being real. You know, everything's not roses and puppy dogs. That's just how life is. But when you've got a good group of people that are going to uplift you and carry you 
and help you get to where you want to go, man, it's going to be so empowering. It's going to blow your mind. Yeah, Dawn, if you haven't seen, um, I think my aunt posted something in the big group about a little small group of people doing a little challenge to see if they can, you know, hit within their calorie goals for a whole month. That's an awesome idea. Yeah, feel free to join that too, Don. <clears throat> so, Mark, I, I got a question for you. Yeah, go ahead. When, when, uh, when you were cutting, mm -hmm. um, what kind of calories did you go down to when you were cutting? I would, I would say probably 1,800 to 1,900, but because my macros were where they needed to be, uh, I wasn't hungry. Um, and that's the ironic thing. Like if, um, you know, protein tends to satiate us more than carbohydrates. So like you can eat carbohydrates and 10 minutes later, you want more carbohydrates. You add protein in like every single meal. I make sure I have protein and I make sure I have some fat in it. I'm not ever eating a meal that's just, you know, carbohydrates. I have people that come to the house here and, and they train and they're trying to lose weight and we'll get, you know, if it's leg day, leg day for me, we go two hours and it's, we get some downtime, but your Lance can testify. You're working for two hours, okay. uh, and people get 20, 25 minutes into it, and they're bonking. And I'm like, "Well, what did you have before you came here?" Well, about an hour before I came, I had a banana, carbohydrate, a glass of orange juice, carbohydrate, um, and a granola bar, carbohydrate. So it's fast burning stuff. You take a carbohydrate, you add protein. All right, so you take that banana, you add two scoops of peanut butter and now you've got healthy fat and you've got protein it slows down the digestive process of that and your energy sustained longer so by knowing this stuff and putting it together that way i basically broke it down into six smaller meals um, and even though my calories were reduced i was also changing my training modality to match so um just briefly segueing in, into something a little bit different it's important to understand this the very first thing you have to have is your goal whether that's, I'm going to lose 25 pounds, I'm going to stay at this weight, I'm going to gain 25 pounds. You have to have your goal first, and then you need to make sure that your training modality, your workout program, matches that goal, and then your eating has to be in alignment to reach that goal. And when you have all three of those in line, you'll be amazed with what you can do in 60 days. Um, and I bring this up because I have, I've trained people that have been marathon runners that were trying to bulk up to embody beast and were frustrated because they can't gain weight. I'm like, well, you're running 30 miles a week and you're trying to lift weights and then you're eating 2000 calories a day. It's, you can't do it. You know, so all that stuff has to line up. You're, if you're, if you're off on any one of those, you're going to get frustrated. But when you bring all those together full circle, it blow your mind with what you can accomplish. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. That's pretty close to what I'm at right now, what I'm looking at doing. So what's that? Uh, I'm at about 1900 calories and I'm about 40, 40, 20 is what I've got for my macros going. So I was just curious what you were doing when you were cutting. What's your, what, what's your goal? What are you trying to cut? Uh, I don't know. I don't have an end goal. Uh, right now I'm about 213 and I'm about six foot tall want to get down below 200 again. Um, but I know 200 isn't really where I want to be. Um, when I get there, just when I'm kind of satisfied, um, then I'll, uh, you, I don't really have a, so you're not a, so much hung up. Yeah. You're not hung up on a specific number. You're looking to lose body fat. Is that more what you're after? Correct. So I would even go 50, 30, 20. All right, cool. 50% protein and you'll, you'll get there a lot quicker. And then the other thing is once you get closer to where you want to be, then you want to start working that balance back a little bit more gradually. And Lance can fill you on all that. He's a, he's an expert in that field. Yeah. Cool. Don't, don't be, don't be so married to an arbitrary number on the scale too, Eric. I'm not. Okay. You know me, I, I, it's more just how I look than I am about a number on the scale. So, um, and don't eat like a bird. That's <laughs> a hard thing with me traveling. So um, trying to figure out good meals that can sit in a car, especially when it's kind of hot. Um, I do Mark, a lot of. Eric's one of the uh, archery coaches with me at Jefferson Junior oh, High. Cool. So he'll, he'll show up to practice and tell me he's had a piece of fish and some peas. 
and it'll be six o'clock at night. <laughs> I get hangry. I go two hours and I'm hangry. Oh, that's that's totally hungry. Ask, hungry. ask oh, Eric how, how angry I get. <laughs> yeah, I'm like the Hulk on. on <laughs> that's exactly what I'm Classes, you know. <laughs> yeah, and especially when you're trying to cut weight bar around just for him just in case <laughs> <laughs> you know that's a good way to that's a good way to plan um when i was driving around a squad car i always packed food and i always bought extra because i would inevitably end up getting a late call that had me working overtime so you know yeah. plan for your success and bring the things with you that like if you're going to be traveling and you're not going to be traveling get one of those little coolers that you can pack stuff in and you have enough for the day just plan a day ahead sure uh, we had one question over here in the chat bar. Um, what can I do to reduce the amount of toe foot discomfort I experienced in my first 60 days of this program? I don't know who asked that and they didn't go into much detail about what exactly the foot discomfort is. I'm not sure if it's like plantar fasciitis or, or what, well, but I mean, I'll very, let him answer that. I probably know what he's going to say. Yeah, very generally, uh, take the jumping and impact part out of it and make sure you're wearing proper shoes for what you're doing. Um, you know, there's a lot of burpees in this program. You can step back into a burpee. You don't have to jump. You can completely take the jumping aspect of it out uh, um, and work around it. You know, I, I have osteoarthritis in my right knee when we were doing rehearsal for uh, 22. I was actually going to be the pull-up guy in resistance one, and I partially tore my Terry's major and lat tendons. Uh, so that eliminated that opportunity. So, you know, be realistic with what your goal, with what your abilities are based on your own body and listen to your body and figure out things that you can do. You know, if you have, even if you have an elliptical or a stationary, you know, if they're doing a specific move that bothers your foot, get on an elliptical and go like hell for that time that they're doing that and then get off and do, you know, focus on what I can do. Not the, not that I can't do. Yeah. There's far too many people I, I talk to on a regular basis to say, well, you know, I tore my meniscus. I can't work out Well, you've got, a core and you've got an upper body. So there's, yeah, you can work out. You're just making excuses not to work out. Mm -hmm. Hang on just a second. This will be my stepson coming home from work in my little <laughs> Yeah. And I'll say what I absolutely love about 22 hardcore is I have two bad Achilles tendons and um, cardio one, I can sweat buckets and it's not very high impact on my Achilles tendons. I can, you know, modify it enough. There's so many burpees in there, even if you're just stepping back, that um, it gets your heart rate super high. That's mm -hmm. uh, cardio one is actually one of my go-to cardio workouts. For you know, it's not like Sean T programs where you're jumping up and down and. You know. No, no, and even you know um, Max Thirty, the modifier for that, I was having major knee problems, and when I did that program, and I was able to get through it that way. So use the modifier track. I'm, I'm telling you that it's really good. There's no impact with the modifier. So follow that and just listen to your body. And if you have specific questions, like if something's going on, make sure you post it in the group because if you're going through something that's a struggle, you're having a difficult time, somebody else in the group, I guarantee you is probably going through something similar. And if they can't provide you with the answers, that's where Lance comes into play as your coach too. And he can help you out. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Anybody else have any questions for Mark? I have one. Sure, what's up? Um, do you think using, using the resistance bands are at a disadvantage for the resistance routines? Or I mean, I don't have a lot of weights. Um, mostly, do you, you can use a sandbag. You can use light dumbbells. You, can, um, you could certainly use resistance bands. Um, you'd probably have to come up with some modifications for those because they don't really show it. But, yeah, you could definitely do that. Um, I, I think a lot of people are going to find, especially when you're starting out, just using that light sandbag is going to blow you away or even just, you know, a 15 or 20 pound dumbbell. You're like, wow, this thing weighs a lot. I, you know, I, I lift big weights. Uh, I pulled 425 pounds on a deadlift and I had this 20 pound sandbag that was making me want to cry. So <laughs> it's a, it's a different ball game from picking up heavy things and putting them down twice or three times to go into I'm going to do 50 reps with this thing jumping up and down over my head. So, yeah. Thanks. You're yeah. Welcome. And Heather, also, one thing um, I did when I got started six years ago was I hit up garage sales for dumbbells. Because you can find there's a lot of overweight people who have good intentions that only use them once. And there you can find some good deals on dumbbells just sitting around. So, um, or if you – like I didn't hit garage sales a lot, but I had a friend that did. And so I sent him a message. I said, Hey, if you, if you're around and you're at a garage sale, 
you know, pick me up and I'd send him a list of what I wanted and what I'd pay for it. And I got a lot of my gem stuff early on for cheap, cheap. You know, 20, 22 is not a program that's meant to use over a 20 pound dumbbell or sandbag. So you're not going to need a Much. whole lot of intensive equipment. Really. You're not. And the, the beach body sandbag, if you if you pick it up, it's um, you could even go to Walmart and get a cheap sandbag because you're not throwing the thing around. It's not like, um, it's not like you're doing slams and stuff with it. You're literally just swinging it and lifting it and that type of stuff. So, yeah, and that that sandbag will kick your butt too, even with just twenty pounds. And the sandbag's different than dumbbells, which is why they kind of created it. You know, the twenty two was created with the assistance of a, a Navy SEAL that had just gotten out. We filmed that in twenty fifteen. He had gotten out in January. We filmed it in like August, and this guy was on SEAL Team Six for sixteen years of his career. Um, and he finished out the end of his career as a buds instructor in San Diego. So you, you don't need heavyweight to accomplish it. But the cool thing with the sandbag is you don't want to fill it full full because you want the, the sand to be able to shift because that's what kind of keeps you off balance and causes your stabilizers and everything else to fire. So I know it's more information than you want. You're like, I just wanted to know about the, <laughs> the bands. No, that's perfect. Yeah. And then if you ever go to Mark's house to work out, you can throw around 100-pound bags. <laughs> 100-pound sandbags, got a 100-pound brute ball, and more coming. Is that or, while wearing the weighted vest? Sometimes. Or, yeah, or he'll, <laughs> he'll put a 20-pound vest on you while flipping an 860-pound tire while pulling a 100-pound sled. <laughs> yeah. True you, story. What, what do you call that move, Mark? I don't really have a name for it. Needs one. <laughs> most, most, most people call it, really? <laughs> <laughs> I say, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You can't do that. Yes, I can. All right. Is that anybody else have anything for Mark? Well, Mark, I, I want to um, thank you for coming on the call. Thank you just for, for being the kind of coach you are. Um, I know we, we think a lot alike in, in a lot of aspects with Beachbody coaching and Mark's, you know, the same as our team. He, he helps anybody and everybody whether they buy products from him or not. Um, and he's definitely one of the guys I look up to and respect most in this business. So um, when I contacted him about doing a video, he's like, shit, why don't we just do a call? And I said, awesome, man. So uh, thank you so much, Mark, for being the kind of coach you are. I appreciate it. Truly a pleasure. And if, um, if I can be of help to any of you, I'm on Facebook. Lance can, if you go to markbriggsfitness.com, um, all my contact stuff's on there. And, um, you know, we're all in this together. So. Do your best, forget the rest. You're ready to get some. Yeah. And uh, enjoy it. That's the biggest thing. Have fun with it. And it's a process. Embrace it. Some days are going to suck. Some days are going to be great. So love everything. All right, guys. I can't wait to wake up tomorrow morning and see your posts. And if you need anything, just let me know. We love you guys. And let's do this tomorrow. All right. Have a good night. See you guys. Thanks again, Mark. You bet. Anytime, Thank brother. Thank you.